Welcome everyone. This is a Q&A session with uh, Rodrigo Ortiz and Sebastian Arnold about legal innovation and legal entrepreneurship. So they've come here to talk about Clamo, which is an application that they've developed. So without further ado, I'll just commence with the questions. So what made you guys decide to become entrepreneurs and what's your backstory and why did you create your company? So I think for us, like several things lined up at the same time. So for example, Rodrigo approached me. I was also very interested in this initial idea and we started working together. And on the other hand, um, we both were, it fit perfectly in, in the time of the life we were currently in. So we just finished university. Um, so we didn't really have something to lose. So yeah, that's kind of when we started, okay, let, let's continue working on it. And since then it's like, a continuous reaffirmation of this decision um, because startups are extremely uncertain. So it's less about this initial decision, but more about this everyday decision to continue to, to continue working on this company and this project and growing it. So um, yeah, I think it's every day we are taking this decision from you. What is your company about? Can you tell us a little bit more about Clemo? Yeah, so Clemo uh, is about resolving claims we want to make claiming easier and this is for both parties involved first consumers we want to make their life easier by giving them a tool to claim much more com comfortably to be able to track the progress and have everything happen in one platform where they don't have to be calling and and, and trying to find who they have to call inside the company everything gets done through claim so this is for free to the consumers on the other hand we give a tool to the co uh, companies to answer without having to integrate to us. We give them emails with the claim in a very visual and easy to see format with, with all the right questions so that they can answer that upon their first touch point. And that's free for the company as well. So as you can see, we, in, we put ourselves in the middle of these claims and we act as the intermediators with giving benefits for both involved. And why do we want to do this? Because the business for us is in the data. We want to learn exactly what problems there, there are in the last stage before losing customers, right? This cons cons consumer data is crucial for companies to be able to understand their current customer experience, how they can improve it, and how they can improve their customer retention. So at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to make claiming better for everyone involved while by intermediating. Perfect. Thank you. That's really what we need in this market. So how did you come up with this idea exactly? What was that motivating drive for you? So uh, the, the idea came and it's not, we don't have a beautiful story where we woke up one day and we were drinking coffee and suddenly boom, it was more of a continuous process. We started with an idea that we thought was the best idea in the world, but as we started validating, and that's what was key for us, Validation made us pivot and pivot and pivot. We found ourselves stumbling on no buts, right? So this, because of legal reasons, this can't happen, but we can do it in this way. Or companies aren't interested in this, but. So all those buts ended up taking us to the current idea we have now, which is already past some filters of validation, but not all of them, which is being tested in the market. <laughs> Fantastic. And what's the business model that Claymo is currently adopting? So from a business model, it's we are, as we're in intermediates, we are serving both company and consumer. Um, and we see ourselves as a B to C to B business model. So first we have to approach the consumer and we have to get them on board and we have them also to make them trust that we are a tool worthy, uh, worthy of using. And then the second step, get the companies on board. On the one hand, uh, to answer the claims and attend the customers' uh, um, problems and, and complaints on our platform. But on the other hand, um, then uh, in later stages as well with the business intelligence where we actually help to improve the processes of the company and actually gain revenue th through that. But um, even though we do not really get any revenue from consumers itself, we first have to approach them and we think that we are a very consumer um, uh, sided solution actually. And that's why B2C to B. 
Okay, and how do you reach out to B2B and B2C? What's your PR strategy? So um, our marketing strategy initially is fully focused on digital marketing. Since we're a, a web application, all our traffic is gonna come through the web. So it's all digital marketing. And this would be mostly uh, social media as nowadays it's predominant and marketing is very, very strong in social media. And then of course, uh, search engines, which in this case is Google. So we're gonna start with uh, allocating a budget to both of them and then figuring out kind of which one works most for our sales funnel. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be mostly digital marketing, but also very important is that we want to make the most out of free marketing, right? So nowadays we have the, if we truly get creative and that's what we're planning and, and we really want to get attention from people in, in clever ways, right? So not just paying and in your face marketing, but we also, for example, on our Twitter account, we want to go on to claims between, I don't know, people like to claim a lot on Twitter. So all those claims against companies, we want to go there and kind of help them solve it, can already start intermediating there and get witty and, and get attention, right? So there's the paid, the paid channel. And also we want to get creative and try to maximize our free, our free channel as much as possible. Perfect. Okay, great. So as you know, this is all about innovation and in this specific case, legal innovation, what does innovation mean to you? And so what is collaborative innovation as well? Well, for us, innovation, I think generally innovation is something to, if we address a problem in a creative or new way, and therefore improve the overall value for all stakeholders involved. And collaboration for innovation is if you put different players that actually have also different goals in them to a certain extent and put them together and you innovate together. You come up with new and creative ways to uh, address certain problems. And um, I think for us, collaboration of, for innovation, like it, it, it can take many different forms. This can be very like a, a structural and long-term formal relation, but it can be also very momentarily, I think that you collaborate with a person like for even in a, I think even in a meeting you can get um, collaboration as in you get input from someone else because whenever you get someone that has their own view, their own expertise background and brings that into your project and, and tries to kind of help you with your innovation, like, this collaboration will be a catalyst for your innovation. So I think definitely like collaboration is, is a catalyst to, to innovation. Okay, fantastic. So I see already a lot of collaboration, collaboration between you two. You got together from the very start and co-founded this company. And there's a lot of innovation here. You know, claims are a big market today. And I just actually want to ask before moving on, what kind of claims are you filing at the moment? I heard a little bit about Twitter. Maybe you can delve deeper into that. Do you want to go for it, Sam? Okay. Um, well, actually, we, we don't want to be limited by certain types of claim. We are looking into certain industries in the, uh, in the beginning. Those are uh, mostly the, those industries that have a lot of claims. So, um, for example, at the moment, we, we are looking to, towards telecommunication claims, but on also um, energy companies, uh, flights, uh, travel agencies. Um, our way, as we are not representing the consumer, um, we don't want to limit ourselves too much to certain types of claims and because we don't have to check if there is actually a valid reason, we are just providing them a tool. So it's very important for us that we provide an overall service that can help any consumer and we're not limiting and, and narrowing down to only the, the, the best of the best claims that, that are are uh, straightforward so we're not cherry picking we're trying to help uh, in all types of claims and later extend also to other industries fantastic thank you for that um what about the selling aspect of your service i understand that you are not charging the consumers but this is allocated to the companies can you explain that a little bit yeah so what's very important for us is that we first needed a go-to market strategy right how are we going to land this we can't expect for companies from one day to another to integrate into our systems, right? 
this is one of the big things that we found in validation. We, we can't expect to suddenly integrate into such a complex system as uh, Telefonica, you know, or all these telecom companies. So we needed a way to get both parties to use it from day one in order to start acquiring this data, acquiring this know-how, and then sell the actual monetized product, which would be, right, the, the consumer insights, the AI, the, um, all this. So what we're doing right now is that since we send everything as a mail to companies, we, we avoid that integration complexity, right? Now, for now, companies have to keep working how they normally do, which is through email, right? Normally, they get claims through emails, whether they have their own way of handling their emails or not. At the end of the day, they get emails and they reply to them. So that's how we deal with them for now. We, we make their life easier and we don't ask anything of them. They don't have to change any way in which they work. They have to reply and that just gets integrated into our platform. So that's how we manage to find our way in between these claims, right? And then layer two, which was our, what I was saying before, is the, the actual product to businesses, which could come in many forms. It could be um, what we're planning on first is the, for the consumer trends and data insights, giving them a platform where they can log on and see, benchmark themselves against other competitors. They can see how well they're doing. Or with AI, they can see which clients have a high escalation probability because of the tone they're using. Um, all these different tools to help them learn more about their customers. Uh, and then on the other hand, once we do have this customer side and we have this transparency a bit and credibility, we can create a SaaS product too, for example, which we sell to companies. And that's also part of the plan where then companies can answer to claims on our platform and make the whole customer experience better than ever. So Sounds that's basically good. how we plan on monetizing it and the go-to-market strategy. Okay, great. Oh, well, talking a little bit about finance and monetizing, how did you manage to bring this project from the very start as a startup? Were you able to find external finance, uh, finance or how did you finance the whole project? So far, um, we bootstrapped everything. So um, we didn't have a need for external financing from business angels or other sources. Um, as we had the technical skills in the team, uh, so it's Rodrigo, um, also David, uh, who is not here at the moment, but he, he's doing the whole backend development. And I, the three of us basically developed the whole product on our own. And hence we were not needing any external financing. And that also got us to this point where we can, we we're able to launch the product without having had to give up anything or to, um, actually are in need of, of external financing. So that's uh, a lucky situation. We are happy to be in this situation so far. Great. And, uh... exactly. and just to quickly add on to Seb, um, in this, since we're talking about collaboration and we're talking about all these things, that doesn't mean that it's just us and we're not talking to other people. Or we, it just means that we have advisors, right? That we, we have a lot of advisors that are contributing. We have mentors, we have this, but we don't have, um, a business angel per se where, you know, so of course it, it involves collaboration, it involves talking with a lot of people, but with the advantage that we don't need to ask for money in order to build a product, right? Okay, so from your own experience, what advice could you give to other startups in regards to financing or what, what paths should they take when trying to make their own startup? Well, directly in line with what we were saying, uh, they should try to extend the, fi the financing as much as possible, right? I think we've all heard this. Uh, and in our case, we really, we really stick to that. We think that uh, we haven't, we, we work hard. We think that our investment is time. We're working every day on, on the product and we love it, we enjoy it. But, um, and also we think it's part of our, our, our biggest advantage, right? That we're close to the product. We know what it entails. We know everything. And of course, that allows us to have a very beneficial situation when, when it comes time to, to do the financing round, which should, should be soon, because we don't have any external equity or we don't have any loose, loose knots here and there. Uh, there's this business angel with this, but he's not our friend anymore. So how do we do, deal with that? It's allowed us to, to keep control and also it hasn't inhibited innovation right because it's not like we're losing time on 
on control on all these little things that should right now we should focus all our energy on the product right so i guess summarizing what in our what we've learned so far is yeah to delay financing as much as possible in order to get to the financing round in the most advantage and advantageous position as possible that's some good advice so to lighten the load i have some personal questions for you guys so um what do you do in your spare time apart from your startup well we think um that we actually we take time off and we think it's very important to have this time where you actually also can clear the mind and then refresh and and come back to it um in the last time i mean with the whole corona crisis has been going on for example for me in my spare times on the weekends it has been a lot of work in the garden so i started gardening and growing vegetables and uh, and fruits in the garden and, and that's kind of the, the the hobby that i went for in the last months what about you, Rodrigo? Any other uh, um, things? I've actually, I, I've shared a bit the passion with Seb of gardening. Well, oh. I, I have some plants myself. I've learned a bit of that since we had now in the coronavirus crisis enough time in our house <laughs> to do so. So that's one of my, but my, yeah, I mean, I'll, always taking advantage on the weekends to kind of disconnect a bit. Because if not, you always end up in this loop and, and sometimes it ends up inhibiting innovation, right? Sometimes our best ideas come on Monday morning after we've been a whole, the whole week going about. Uh, but sometimes that fresh, fresh mindset, having gone with some friends, having some beers, just disconnecting always helps to then connect much better. And so what is, uh, what is the way you get that innovation flowing? Coffee or tea? Uh, <laughs> I'm a coffee person myself, okay. and now in summer, I like my coffee cold. <laughs> oh, nice iced coffee. What about you, Seb? I also go for coffee. Maybe once in a while, a tea to surprise my body. But <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Good. Any holiday destinations post-coronavirus? I just recently bought um, a new a neoprene. I think it's and a surfboard. Mm -hmm. which I was very eager to buy. Uh, so this, this summer, I'm going to dedicate to catching some waves and, uh, so the beach, and, and improving my surf. <laughs> Good. And what about you, Sebastian? Well, it, it's always hard. I, I, I like to see the beach or the mountains. I think this for this year, it's going to be the mountains in Austria mm -hmm. doing some hiking. Great. Away from people. So keeping very, very safe. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and so, golden rules for living. I already heard this disconnecting from work on the weekends is really important for you guys. Is there any other golden rules that you guys abide by for the success of your startup? Well, one I would say is, is, is like mutual respect, right? Kind of like, I think something that Seb and I do very well is that we we both work well together. We, we have our, our meetings that are at this time and at that, and we always uh, share. And well, un, until now, it's always been a mutual uh, give and take, right? We both work hard all day. Uh, we, we talk all the time. We share that passion. We sh so I think just having that connection, right, with the team is super important. So yeah, I don't know if that's a rule or not. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> one that you stick to, so it's working. <laughs> good good mutual respect i like that what about you Sam? Think, what's a good I, rule i think that's that's definitely a part of it and um that has helped us a lot which just to add on it i think it doesn't mean that uh that you cannot have like certain disagreements or or, or different point of views but i think those are exactly the, the points where then when you discuss it it, it it drags you even further because if you see the other uh, person's perspective and if you think in different ways then maybe it's not a or b but it's it's something in the middle and and that's the best option to go for so i think mutual respect and then keeping a, an open conversation and flow of ideas i think that's that's the perfect mix for success Definitely. And that also mixed with a little bit of persistence and drive, <laughs> I would say. 
there's just been a lot of days. In that mix, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of days where we 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 woke up and and suddenly the day before kind of validation let, told us that we can't do things like this. So we kind of I don't know how many mornings we woke up kind of on a clean slate. Like okay, how are we gonna do this? Like this didn't work. Now we gotta find a new way of doing it. New, that you know is is frustrating and and. Yeah, I guess it's also easy for some people to give up and, and get frustrated and such. Mm -hmm. But I think in that we've been very good and, and not even doubting, right? Just, okay, let's keep going. We're going to figure this out and kind of like blind, not blind persistence, but kind of like this, this drive to, to, to not give up. So I think that's also key. Fantastic. Lots of life lessons for any of the viewers. And now for my final question, what books are you recommending to other startups or at least reading yourself to help you in this process? So I, I actually wrote down a little list. I have a list oh, here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I can also send it through later, but I don't know. There's a lot of good ones like a zero to one from Peter Thiel, right? From pay, the PayPal mafia. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one, really good one called Machine Platform Crowd. That's really good to also understand how, how like machine learning together with platforms and the whole crowd, uh, crowd lending or crowd sourcing, the whole, how they interact and how you can take advantage of them. The classic Lean Startup. I think we've all heard of that book. And if not, it's probably the first book you should read if you're interested in startups, kind of this whole new methodology of, of iterating and working based on feedback um then more technical ones for example traverse traversing the traction gap it's a really good one written by a venture capital which um gives you tips on how you can traverse the traction gap and, <laughs> and get to that real traction to get real metrics and then another really good one that's always recommended um is venture deals which is a book by silicon valley venture capitalists on how to prepare for a term sheet and all these fun things. <laughs> so those are kind of the ones I thought of. Things to go through, definitely. So lots of material there. Thank you. Exactly. I'll send those. Okay, great. We're looking forward to that. So thank you so much for telling us about your company. It was a Q&A session about legal entrepreneurship and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Cheers. It's been a pleasure.